Good afternoon and welcome to this week's This Smart Lunch and Learn webinar. Our weekly webinars are aimed to provide advice and share knowledge on key business topics and specialist areas. And our host today is This Smart Select member, Les Guttridge from 101 System Works Limited. And he's here to talk to us today about names, formulas and other excellent stuff. Before we start our webinar, can I ask you all to use the question mark function on your screen to post any questions that you may have and Les will do his best to answer them all at the, at the end of the session. Thank you very much, Les. Over to you. Thanks, Caroline. Afternoon, everybody. I've switched over to Excel, and away we go. Um, what are names? Up here on the screen, there is actually a drop-down called the name box, and, and it, at the moment, it holds those names which I've created just show you what they do if I click central it will actually highlight that area of this spreadsheet if I click south it will highlight that if I click north it will highlight that and what's the point the point is um, this is close together but if you've got areas of a spreadsheet that you want to jump to uh, fairly quickly then you can navigate by creating a name just about to show you how to do one and you'll see that on the list there there isn't a name for offshore so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that name and first of all you highlight the target area that you want to be named this area can be as little as one cell and as much as a, a complete set of columns or a complete set of rows just depending on the purpose of what the name is going to be for. Um, so I've got all the other blocks and I haven't got offshore here. So I'm just going to um, put that one in this spreadsheet. What you do is you click in the box there and you put in the name, type it up. It can't have spaces uh, and you're better off if it doesn't have a number at the start. So I can't spell either. Uh, here we go. Offshore. As soon as you finish typing it, you must press enter unless, um, in order to rather, for it to become part of the system. So now I'm going to press enter. You can tell it's gone in because the name actually springs over to the center of that box. So if I click over here, and we'll test out the one that I've just created so here we are and it's bookmarking I'm going to click on another tab down here just to be out of the way to show you that you don't have to be on that spreadsheet in order to use that name so you can be on the other spreadsheet and you can jump to that name from anywhere really those names, uh, when you save the spreadsheet, the, the file, then those names are stored as part of it. So there's one usage. It's not that much of a mind-blowing use, but uh, it is quite useful sometimes to only use uh, a name as a navigation tool. So, but by far the most useful is when you use names um, in formulas or in validation or in conditional formatting or in tables. So swiftly moving on, I'm going to move on to the next tab, which is here. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of usages of names. Now, um, this cell here... Uh, is I've clearly got the VAT rate in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name that cell as VAT rate. Makes sense. Uh, I'm going to press enter, remember, and that will become part of the system. And if I click there in order to use the VAT rate, this is what you do. I'm going to create a formula there by pressing equals. I'm going to pick up the £100 with a click. And then what I want to do is I want to find out the VAT amount. So I need to do a multiply. And instead of picking that cell with the VAT in it, I'm going to press F3 
And what happens with F3 while you're building a formula is it actually brings down the name list. And uh, if I scroll to the bottom of the list, there's the one I've just created. I've just double clicked and it's formed part of the formula lock. So it's going to multiply C8 by the VAT rate and 20% of £100 is £20. So that's convinced me that it's working okay. Uh, and I'm just going to pull that down like you might do yourselves in order to run that formula on and uh, seems to be working a treat. If you don't know this keyboard shortcut, uh, control and this key, which is what I call the back apostrophe key. Some people call it the grab accent key. Uh, that's what I'm going to do now because by using that keyboard shortcut, you will reveal the formulas and you go into what I call formula mode. Uh, and the purpose is for you to say that when I pulled that formula down, it's actually used the name for that cell, and it's like a fix. So in formulas, you've actually fixed that you're going to multiply by 0.2 or the 20% all the, all the way down in order to create the and work out the VAT. So I've used the same keyboard shortcut control and back apostrophe in order to um, in order to go back to normal display with the um, with the with the spreadsheet so fixing a cell with a name is quite a useful thing I used a great deal in all the spreadsheets that I create this time I'm going to highlight this column and I'm going to call that inquiry date. Pressing enter, notice I haven't got a space in there but I did use a capital D in order to make the name readable up here. Okay, uh, I'm pressing enter so that inquiry date is part of the system. And I'm now going to click there because what I want to do is I want to know what the follow-up date is. 21 days or whatever you choose, 14 days, 7 days. I'm going to use 21 days this time. I want to know what the follow-up date is 21 days after the inquiry date. So here we go. I'm going to start with an equals. I'm going to press F3. And I'm going to pick up inquiry date as my name and I'm going to type, simply type plus 21 which is what I was after apparently 21 days after the 10th of March is the 31st of March so that makes sense and I'm just going to run the formula down I'm going to look at the formula sorry it seems to have gone over there the formula it says the same all the way down, interestingly, but when you're in that situation, when your name is a block, it actually takes the relative date, the date from the row that you're working on, in order to do the calculation. So although it says inquiry date plus 21, it is actually row by row, it's this date plus 21, that date plus 21, this date plus 21, and so on. Hope that's clear. Uh, and uh, it, so you can see that by using names in a uh, in that sort of way, again, it makes the I'll go back to the display of the formula. It does make the formula readable. Perhaps it makes it more meaningful. And uh, I like it. Hope you do too. Back to normal display. Now then using names in a validation situation. I don't know whether you do this yourselves, but uh, you can actually set up drop downs in columns, giving you a limited choice in order to fill in somebody's details. So uh, here I've got, um, as you can see, four things. 
uh, though that information is actually stored on here I, I always have a little tab with LU's which stands for lookups uh, and when I highlight this if you look up at the uh, in the name box I've actually given that set of four things a name department lookup for obvious reasons this is division lookup and this is benefits lookup so I'm going to use those names actually in the validation situation. So how do we go about it? I'm going to apply a department lookup drop down on all of these cells in this column F. So I'm just going to highlight the target cells that are going to be using that. And um, to set up a validation, you need to remember that validation is actually on the data tab. So uh, I'll just click there and you can see validation here, which I'm going to drop down and I'm going to go for the first option, which is where you set up the validation. Don't know whether you've done this before, but it's, um, it's quite easy to do. So what do I want? I want a drop down list to um, operate in that selected area that I've just uh, set going there. And again, if you press F3, you'll be able to get hold of the names that are in use in the spreadsheet. And I said we're going to use the department lookup. So I'm going to double click there. And it actually puts that as a formula in the source box which means it's going to drop down the four names, the four department names uh, for me when I get it into operation. You can actually set up a, 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 a message for while you're using it, but I'm not going to bother just yet. Uh, and you can also set down uh, uh, an error message if somebody uh, breaks the rules and tries to use a name that, um, sorry, a department that, that isn't in the, the list that I've got going. So uh, I'm just going to click OK on there. I'm going to click away safely. And now I'm going to click on here. And you can see that now every cell has got that drop-down list. So I'm going to put uh, Dominic McDonald in marketing. And I'm going to put um, Chris Jones into HR and so on. So it's a great way of, he's creative. So it's a great way of, um, of using a name. I'll just run that through again, because if, if you haven't done it before, uh, there are a few ins and outs to it. So uh, let's have another go. So highlight your area. Remember that validation is on the data tab. Drop this down. Go for data validation. I need a, my settings to be a list, a drop-down list. I remember that I press F3 in order to get the names to choose from. And this time I'm going for benefits. Click OK. And now these benefits, which are on this lookup here, those benefits are available from the drop-down in the cell. And uh, it does mean that the filling in of people's data is that much more straightforward because you haven't actually got anything to remember uh, you know it's going to be there on your drop down so that's pretty damn marvelous um, so moving on if you've ever used conditional formatting um, then um, you'll be halfway there obviously but if you've never used conditional formatting then uh, why would you answer you might want to highlight some of your information on your table for a specific reason so I'm just going to act although this is conditional formatting too I'm actually going to start with this one first what I've set up here is conditionally um, I've got this block of uh, numbers to highlight in green depending on the number that is there 
Now, I've actually got in here a particular formula, which um, is quite an interesting formula. So uh, let me just show you what it is. Um, there's a function called random between, and uh, I'm picking a number between 8 and 19, and then I'm multiplying uh, by 100 in order to fill this spot. And it's only for my demonstration purposes. If you wanted, you could actually type the number in here yourself. But I'm just going to recalculate by um, another key you might not remember is pressing F9. Uh, pressing F9 in Excel will recalculate. So if I do that, the, the box C4 will change number look. And every time I do that, the other numbers are highlighted because the numbers in green are actually greater than the one that's in this trigger box, this target box. So setting up that was a, um, a mission in itself. But how do you set this up to respond to that number? Well, first of all, look, I've actually called that cell. I've given it a name. I've called it threshold. And secondly, I'm just now going to highlight that area because you, you need to know uh, what the conditional formatting is that's going on in that box. So if uh, conditional formatting is on the home tab, so I'm going to there. And I'm just going to have a look at the rules by uh, clicking that down and going for manage the rules just to see what's going on. So here, look, is the rule. And it says that B6. Now, why does it only say B6 when I've actually highlighted the whole area? And this is a funny little concept. You actually use that as the typical cell. If you don't put any dollars on it, it will mean that it will actually um, look at every cell in that box but you've got to use one starting cell address in order to start the ball rolling for the formula and you in this case you always use the top left hand corner just going to edit that rule and see what's going on and you can see here that uh, the formula has been used in order to determine how to format the cell so what I've said is, is this number B6 and any other in the rest of the table, is that number greater than the threshold number? And in this case, yes, it is bigger than 900. So it's actually been uh, shaded in green. So the formula is that. And the coloration, well, you just choose a color by um, by going into the format box and then looking at the tabs up here. So what I'm going to do, uh, everybody, is I'm going to redo that so that you can see the steps that were involved in order to, to achieve what I've achieved. So I'm just going to delete that rule. And by doing so, all of these have gone back to normal display. So I'm going to click out close on that one. And I'm back to not having anything special apart from the number being generated when I press F9. Or I could actually type it up by clicking in that box, remember. So, but anyway, digressing. Let's have a look at the conditional formatting. So the first thing you do is you highlight the target area that is going to be formatted. You then click this down and you go for a new rule. And if you remember, I would got this one highlighted because I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells are going to be formatted. And then you click in here in order to set up the formula. Now this time I'm going to color if it's less than the threshold. So what you do is you pick up the, remember it's the top left corner as your typical thing. Now it's actually put dollars in there 
you can't have dollars if you want it because it's fixing it to be six if you want to apply the color to everyone in the table you've got to have no dollars on that expression so I've just rubbed out the the dollars and, and it literally just says B6 I'm going to type the less than sign because I've changed my mind about the coloring so that I want it to be under the threshold number and remember if you want to get hold of the names in the in the spreadsheet you press F3 and if you remember it was called threshold so I'm just going to double click that and it becomes part of the formula so that's the first major half of the of the uh, of this um, conditional formatting setup what remains to be done is to choose the formatting so here we go I'm going to go for font I'm going to have dark red and bold and I'm also going to have a, a sort of a, a light yellow from here okay there we go gives you an idea of how it's going to look I'm going to click OK and now all the cells that are less than 1800 are being coloured just going to change that number I'm going to type it up this time not relying on the formula so I'm going to say 800 and all the ones that are being coloured are literally less than better change that name now haven't I so it says less than that label I mean not name so 500 you could use this idea in order to find out and highlight people who are uh, not coming up to scratch with their sales or something like that there you go chosen 800 again done a good job I think here's a bit of a bit of a faff not so easy to get your head around it but I will be sending you the notes in order to uh, for you to be able to do that um, yourselves right back to this one similar idea um, this box is called target region if I alter the drop down this is done on validation like we did before uh, it will actually highlight the rows where the region is what it says in that box there south offshore north so again you've got sort of a dynamic control about how you are coloring these people how do you do it answer coming up first of all you highlight the target area that's going to get the treatment like I did last time uh, and now I'm going to look up the formatting that's already in the system and uh, here let's have a look at the rule by clicking edit now this time it actually says something with a dollar in this time because although you are highlighting the um, the whole table you have to fix it that they so that the system is concentrating on column D so because that is where the region name is all the way down there so you must fix it so that it's column D with a dollar D but you don't fix the number so you don't put dollar six in there okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out and show you how it's achieved from scratch so here we go I'm highlighting the whole of the target area I'm going to set up a new rule it's done on formula and you click in the formula box to do the major half of the setup so what you do is you pick a typical the target value from the top row which is we're trying to find out who's got who is in a particular region so your typical is off the tip off the top row and you click 
D6. Now, as you click that, it actually puts dollars on both, but I just explained uh, that you must only fix the column, not the row. So you need to knock out the dollar against the number and just fix the D so that it keeps to the column D and not to the row. Effectively, that means that it's going to travel as as we as it looks at the, the table, it's going to travel down column D. That's what it means. But the first formula must be from the top row. I just wanted to show the ones that are equal to the um, to the um, target region. So remember, I've pressed F3 in order to get that name. I've double clicked. It's come in here. I need to set up a coloration that I'm going to go for. So I'm going to pick just a simple color this time. Uh, I'll pick the blue. OK. OK. Uh, there it is set up. Going to change that to offshore. There it is. OK. So there we are. I'm nearly running out of time. Um, I'm just going to move on now to tables. If you've never done a table before, um, a table is a special version of a list. To set up a table, you do control with T. You say that it picks up the uh, how far down this table is. It's actually quite a long way down, look, from row 5 down to row 1500 and more. Uh, you have to say that your table's got a header. You click OK and it colours that. Uh, I need to just move something on my screen uh, that's in the way. Just one moment. Uh, I'm just going to change the, the coloration slightly. I'm just going to go for this one. As you can see, it's very easy to set up the colouring. Now, as soon as you set up a table, you can actually give it a name. So I'm going to call this employees. It's got its own table name box. And the great thing about a table is that you can actually use the table's names in the for in a formula. So what I'm going to do here simply is I'm going to multiply the quantity by the unit cost by using the table name. So it's going to be equals, and I just call that employees. So, and now you've got, I've started to type employees, and you actually get the system picking up the table name. I'm going to press the tab key to actually pick that up. If you want the quantity sold, then you press the square bracket and it will actually give you all the names of the fields, of, in, in other words, the columns in that table. So I'm picking a quantity sold. I'm closing the square bracket. I'm going to press multiply. I'm going to type employees again. I'm going to press the tab key to pick up the table name. I'm going to press a square bracket, and I'm going to find unit cost here, which is the name in this. And look, it's created a meaningful, readable formula in that table. And when I press enter, a table is a fantastic object because it will actually run that formula all the way down the column. Here we go. And if you look at all the formulas, they all say quantity sold multiplied by unit cost. I think that's pretty damn marvellous myself. Um, I'm just going to the top of the table. I've got one more, and then Caroline's going to tell me to shut up. So here we go. This time, I'm going to create the full name out of those two. Here we go. Equals. Employee. First name, close the bracket, 
Now, and, that's a special symbol for joining text together. I'm going to join it with a space in quotations. And, employee, tab, square bracket, last name, close the square bracket. Look, it's created the full name out of those two columns which just goes to show you that you, you're better off with the, the two fields separate, but you can actually join the text together. Folks, we've come to the end of uh, the half an hour. A time has flown, uh, unbelievably. Hope it's been of use to you. There is a lot more I could say about names. Um, come back to me if you'd like to know more, because as you might know, Les is more. Great, thank you very much, Les. Uh, let's have a look, see if we've got any um, questions coming through. Okay, your first question is from Sophie, and she says, Les, where can I find out more information about names and formulas? There's uh, lots and lots of information on the net, actually, but there's a, a guy in America called Dave Bruns, B-R-U-N-S, and he puts together fantastic quick videos and tips, uh, much like the ones I do. Um, so if you don't want to get anything off me, you can get stuff off him. So Dave Bruns, if you, if you uh, Google Dave Bruns, uh, that's one way of doing it, but you could quite easily Google uh, using names in Excel. That will do a great job for you and give you lots to choose from. Okay, thank you very much. Um, a question now from James. Um, Les, would you just go over again how to use names inside a table, please? Okay, so maybe it's this this one here. I'll just rub this out um, so that I can start again. So I'm at the top. I'm on the top row. So I start equals. You start typing the name of the table, which is employees, and it picks it up. Press tab and it will go in. Press a square bracket to find the list of the field names from the tops of these columns. So I'm going to go for quantity sold. Close the square bracket. Do a multiply on the keyboard and then find the name for the field for unit cost. So that's done by starting the name employees, because that's what the name of the table is. Pressing a square bracket to get hold of the field names. So I'm going to go for unit cost. I double clicked it and I'm closing the square bracket in order to make uh, Excel happy. Now pressing enter uh, and the formula is complete, but it also zaps down the column. Oh, that's okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, another question um, from Alan this time. Please, could you just remind us again how you delete names? Well, I didn't tell you to tell you the truth. So, um, um, so he must have uh, um, dreamt that I did. So, this is what you do, folks. If you want to remove names out of your system, you press Control with F3. That is the same as doing formulas name manager. Control with F3. And what you're able to do, look, is you're able to, you can't delete a table name, unfortunately. That has to be done, but um, a different way. But the ones that are like offshore, you can actually click it and delete it by clicking this button. But also down here, look, it tells you the cell references of where the name is. So if you want to, if you do need to adjust the range of cells that that name um, points to, then you do it off the name manager. So everybody is control with F3. Hope that's okay. Perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to thank you again, Les, for hosting today's webinar. My pleasure. I'll send out a copy of um, Les's presentation and his full contact details out to you all later on this afternoon so you can contact him direct if you have any further questions.
thank you for joining us and we'd just like to say have a great afternoon. Thanks everybody, bye for now.